Hey guys, what's up? My name is Isaac David and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. Usually on this channel we engage with something culturally from a Christian worldview or just dig into the, the things of life and, and really try to, you know, dive into those things from a Christian perspective. But today I want to do a little something different, <laughs> mix it up a little bit, and I want to do a little bit of a QA. and a uh, So I jumped over to Instagram, asked you guys, hey, what, what questions do you have for me, theology, advice, advice, personal, whatever, and you supplied me with some amazing questions, and let's jump into those right now. So the first question is, how do you deal with anxiety personally? I know I've talked about anxiety on the channel um, and even shared some of my own experience with it, but let me just be honest with you guys in terms of how I deal with anxiety. These days it's stressful, right? Like with the whole COVID situation, especially here in Winnipeg, um, we're on lockdown again, at least for the most part, uh, five people to a, a house. Um, a lot of the you know gyms and that kind of thing are closed. And so it feels lonely and it feels like it's definitely anxiety producing. So how do I deal with it? I mean, I'd like to say I always just like, whenever I feel a tinge of anxiety, I just get on my knees and pray. Um, that's what I'd like to do, honestly, but that's not what I do. What I tend to do is if I have some time, look, I feel anxious about something and it's a little bit flexible. Maybe it's a deadline for something, or maybe I'm just anxious about the future in some way. Um, if I have some time to watch a couple YouTube videos, that's t that tends to be what I do. YouTube and food, um, that tends to be my kind of relax, like unplug, unwind, thing. It's really my go-to. It's my favorite thing ever. Uh, just eating by myself and watching TV or watching YouTube. Um, but honestly, if, if I were to, you know, if I'm really dealing with some anxiety late at night, I try not to go to YouTube. I try to just pray. And if you think anything like me, I'm pretty like I section aspects of life off. So I go through each section of life and pray through that, whether it's finances, friends, family, work, dreams, future. I just pray through each aspect of that. And that really brings a sense of peace because I'm almost creating an organizational system within prayer and for my kind of like OCD, a little bit mindset and, and mentality, it helps. What is an interesting fact about yourself is the next question. Um, I was homeschooled. I have seven siblings. I live in Canada. Um, let me think of some other ones. I love to cook. Um, that's one of my favorite relaxing hobbies. How do you know if God is calling you to something? Now, this question is, I think, <laughs> real for a lot of us, especially those who have done something crazy in their life that they that they sense God was leading them towards. And, and the question then is like, how did you know that? How did you know God was leading you towards, you know, starting this online ministry? How did you know God wanted you to be a, a missionary in Peru? Or how did you know that God wanted wanted you to start this company or whatever. And, and I think really like it, we love it to be black and white and maybe for some people it is. Maybe it's just like, you know, you, you get a voice from God and God gives you a very direct sign that this is what you should be doing. But for me, it was a leading up process. Like I, I, I stepped out in faith in one aspect and doors were opened and then stepped out again and then doors were opened and then maybe I made a mistake, but but God used that to, to, to move me into another direction and it kind of it's just this winding path connecting the dots and you can't see exactly where he's leading you, but you know when something's in front of you and you have an opportunity and the only reason you'd say no or you wouldn't do it is out of fear. Honestly, that's the time where I say I need to step into this because I can't let fear hold me back and I want to see what God would have for me in this scary thing. So that's my mentality these days. Say yes. Say yes to it and, and see what God could do through that. So how do you know if God is calling you to something? Well, I mean, if there's an opportunity that, that seems wise, that seems good, and you've talked to wise family members and, and friends and that kind of thing about it, um, then go for it and see where God might lead you in that. What are some of my favorite things for the holidays? Okay, this is my absolute favorite. I love cooking for New Year's Eve and Christmas. Um, my favorite thing ever is when people have gone to bed on Christmas Eve. I'm usually the last one up and uh, I'm usually like cleaning up some things or whatever, listening to some 
Christmas music, put on a Christmas concert or something, and just relaxing after that. And then in the morning, usually waking up first, getting some food on for Christmas breakfast, having some music, just pumping. Oh man, that's my favorite. I'm so looking forward to that every year. It's so fun. Okay, guys, this is uh, <laughs> this is a question I got on Instagram. What are you looking for in a wife? And I was like, okay, I don't know if I'm going to answer this, but let's talk about it. You know, in the last about six months, I'd say I've had a mental shift. Um, I'm 21. I've never been in a relationship. Honestly, I've never really gone on an official date. And so my mind honestly was like, I'm focused on ministry. I'm focused on getting my life together. I'm focused on following God. I don't need, I don't got time for a relationship. I don't even want to enter that realm where I really know nothing about that stuff yet. Um, but in the last six months, I kind of <laughs> I've opened myself up to the possibility of, of, of going on dates or go, being in a relationship or that kind of thing. And so what am I, and, and it started to prompt these questions of, okay, what am I actually looking for in a wife? So the way I've set it up now is kind of, I have this must have list and uh, you know, wants list. And I don't know if this is the best way to do it. I don't, I've never been in a relationship. I don't know how this works, but this is how I do it. So in the must haves list, list it's things that are like uh, faith, faith, surrounding faith and, and believing the same things that I believe about Jesus, about, you know, theology. Um, and then there's some things about family. Um, I want to homeschool my kids um, and just kind of really core things that I just couldn't say um, yes to somebody who didn't believe those things. And then also kind of a, a wants list where I'm an organizational person. I'm a pretty clean person. So I don't like <laughs> like messy people, really. So I'm just like, but but the funny thing is, is as I look at my parents too, and about like other couples that I see, dude, they're always the opposite. So I just feel like God's kind of like, yeah, you want that, but uh, I got other plans for you. So we'll see. How do you overcome laziness, especially in this season? This has been a huge problem for me um, in the last couple weeks because all of a sudden my sleep schedule usually gets flipped around on the weekends. I usually stay up pretty late, but then usually in the on the weekdays it gets put back together. But recently, uh, man, I've been hitting the snooze button and I've been sleeping in a little bit too long, like to eight or eight thirty and that kind of thing. I'm usually pretty like strict about getting up at seven at least. Um, so I felt kind of like lazy and um, it's really kind of put a damper on a lot of my other creative projects because I feel like I got a late start and I'm doing catch up and all that kind of thing. I think the thing is for laziness is set yourself up to feel motivated to produce, to, to get things out, to, to be productive in what you have to do. So whatever that thing is, whether it's having a, having a good solid breakfast, whether it's having an outfit, um, like clothing picked out where you're like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to tackle this day. Whether it's like a, a playlist that, that you're going to listen to at the beginning of the day, that's going to get you up and moving. Um, or scheduling something right at the beginning of your day that's going to get you out and about, whether that's just a jog or <laughs> at this point, I ain't doing no jogs because outside it is freezing um, in Winnipeg here. But, uh, you know, maybe you're in a warmer climate, climate, whatever it is, have something that's going to get you out and about, force you to. Um, and then it's going to get you in this realm of, of being able to produce, being able to get out of that laziness. What was my dream job as a kid? I actually talk about this in my book. Can you see it? It's right there. A letter to my father, what your son wants to tell you, but doesn't available on dailydisciple.ca. For all you fathers and sons out there, pick it up. It's a great read. Um, but I talk about the fact that I wanted to be <laughs> an astronomer. And uh, I actually was, I remember I was in the car with one of my friends and he, and I was talking to him about the stars and the moon and, and, and the, and the planets and, and just my deep fascination for these things. Um, and he said, Isaac, is this another one of your phases? And I was like, oh no, 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 this is going to stick literally the next week. I was like, no, I want to become a geologist now. So I think for me, it was all over the place, geologist, um, astronomer. Every time I got a new science book, honestly, I was like, this is it. What's your favorite area of study? Somebody said, says here that they love presuppositional apologetics. It's funny that you bring up presuppositional apologetics because that's one of my favorite things to study too. Look it up if you have no idea what it is. I won't get into it now, but another aspect that I love 
to uh, study in terms of theology is kind of the theology of the soul, um, kind of uh, tackling the issues of Christianity and mental health. And in the future, we're definitely going to be digging into more of that. Um, there may be special projects on the way that will will explore more of those issues, but that's something that's really really important to me and I'm passionate about. What are your life goals? I actually wrote them down here. Um, get married, have kids, be self-employed, uh, maintain a small close group of friends, maintain many creative outlets, um, follow Jesus faithfully, and grow in my affection for him. Those are the things that just come off the top of my head. Um, it's not exhaustive, but yeah, those are the key things that I want my life to be made up of. Those are my goals. I'm working towards those in some ways. Um, some are more at the forefront than others, but ultimately, yeah, those are the things that I'm striving towards. Advice for an 18 year old, um, for you, my friend, who you ask, who asked this question, 18 year old, and if you're 18 out there, um, this is for you too. Um, you're getting out of high school. You're trying to figure out exactly what you're going to do. People are saying, go to university. It's good to just get something, get a, get a degree of some kind. And you're, maybe you're like, oh, I know what I want to do. Or maybe you're kind of lost and you have some creative passions, but you just don't know how that could turn into a job and you're just confused. Look, I get where you're coming from. I went to university for a year, found out that it really wasn't for me, at least at that point in my life. Moved on to some other things, trying to build skills, develop skills. At this point, you're 18. Two things. Surround yourself with people that inspire you and that um, motivate you and encourage you and challenge you to be to be a better person, to follow Jesus more deeply in every aspect of life. And then the second thing is develop skills. Develop skills, whatever you're passionate about, hone into that and continue to develop your skill in those things. Because look, if you become an expert in something, um, you'll always have a place to go. Somebody will always need you. You'll have a job. You'll, you'll, you'll be able to impact people the way you want to if you're an expert in something. So strive towards building skills. And you don't need to become an expert right now, but you're at the beginning stages of, of what you're passionate about. If it's film, if it's art, if it is um, math or statistics or, or some kind of, you know, or if it's writing or whatever, hone into that and become an expert at that. But along the way, don't be afraid to hop. If, if something, if this doesn't seem like your thing, then move to something else. Try new things and develop skills in those areas. The more skills, the better. Okay, the last question of this video. How do you uh, have the courage to speak on controversial issues, especially with backlash? Um, for me, I think it's, it's based on the fact that I have a good support system. I have a good foundation of friends and family that I can fall back on that I know if the world hates me, I can still, um, you know, I still have people that love me in my life that, that'll support me regardless. Um, that's been huge because I can, I can tell even in this season where maybe I'll feel lonely sometimes or, uh, you know, with the whole COVID thing, having some, be, being able to see my friends as much and uh, I get a hate comment on a YouTube video or, or whatever, that can hit me harder because I don't feel that sense of connection with people that actually accept me and love me. So that's a big thing. I think whenever you're trying to step out and courage and say something that's, that's meaningful, that's important, but you, you're going to get backlash on, just, just hone in and focus more on the people that still <laughs> love you and still accept you and, and regardless of any of that because those people out there that are saying things to you or that hate you because of what you believe, look, those aren't the people you want to hang out anyway, anyway with and you don't need those people to love you anyway. So just keep going, have that nice support system behind you, but know ultimately your ultimate support system is God. He's the one you're going to fall back on when the, the rest of the world hates you, honestly. And, uh, and that's where our hope is. As long as God loves us, you know, if God is for us, who can be against us? Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you guys got something from this video that you were entertained or whatever. Um, thank you so much for you guys who were on the Daily Disciple Club on Patreon. Uh, I can't explain to you how much it means to me that you are a part of supporting this ministry on a monthly basis. And if you want to help support my ministry, head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple to support my ministry on a monthly basis. It doesn't just stop here on YouTube or on Instagram. 
TikTok with almost 100,000 followers on platforms reaching people daily with the gospel. So please consider supporting me and this ministry. As I said, it's my dream to be self-employed so you can help me get closer to that goal. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hit this like button down below if you like the video and subscribe because I'm putting out new videos all the time. I'll see you next time. God bless.